Another thing I like to share with the students in the class is something that I have named the Mazel effect. I figured everybody else had something named after him in magnetism. I would name one after me. I haven't found this anywhere else that anyone else knew about it. I discovered this about four or five years ago while playing with the magnets. So I want to encourage all the students out there, be curious. You can find things out today that have been around for a long time, but no one has discovered them before. This comes from the two magnets. You see that I have a large and a small thin magnet. These are very thin, two millimeters thick, and this is one inch square, and this is a half inch square. Normally, you have been taught in school that two poles that are the same, like two north poles or two south poles, do not attract. Like poles repel, and the opposite poles attract. Now, and that's most of the time true, but as you'll see now, not always true. We can take, and when two north, a north and a south stick together, they stick together like this. The principle here is this is a large thin magnet and a smaller thin magnet. These will work up to a, uh, a little bit larger on the small magnet. They'll work a little bit thicker on the large magnet, but this, as long as you keep within this ratio, these will work. I can take 6 inch by 4 inch magnets, and I can take and put a magnet this size right in the middle, and it'll stick to the center, as you'll see in just a minute. In this case, what's happening on a large thin magnet, the lines of magnetism are coming out and looping around to get to the other side. As I like to say, all North Pole is searching for South Pole, and South Pole is searching for North Pole. And so it takes the shortest path, and it goes around. Well, in the corners, the magnetic flux concentration is very high. In the center, it's very low. Now, when I take this magnet and let it stick as it wants to, it will only go into corners. It is very difficult if uh, I have not been able to make it stay in the center when I play with it. However, if I slide the magnet off, if I slide it off and turn it over, now you can feel it repelling. It pushes, and you would think it's repelling, it won't stick. But we can push it straight forward to the center, and it stays. It stays because the magnetic force on the inside, even though it's a north facing a north, that north is attracted to the south on the other side, and the south pole flux coming off of the north pole flux coming off of the corners of this magnet, searching for a south pole, finds one right on the back of this magnet, and they pin it down. Now that the magnet is pinned, you can see. You will know you've succeeded in this when you get it in the center. And I've done this with all my first, second, and third grade classes, so I know anybody can do it. My first and second and third graders don't have any trouble doing it either. Now, with the magnet in the center, this is the part the kids love. If you nudge it towards one of the corners, the magnet flies off. So we set it like this one more time. We set it like this with it in a corner. You simply slide the magnet off, flip it over. You'll feel it repelling. Simply push all the way to the center, and you have it. This is the Moselle effect, or as a lot of kids like to call it, the flipping magnets trick. And it flips off. As it gets to the corner, the flux concentration is very high. And when it reaches a point that the force holding it down is less than the force that's pushing it away, it flips off. So yes, two norths still do repel, and two souths do repel, but they will stick together.